3. Okay, so again, welcome to DNA course number 3. No? Ang uh, title ng uh, DNA course number 3 ay about uh, four chair discipling. No? Four chair discipling. Again, um, I'm Pastor Abner Abatayo. No? I lead the DNA team to teach uh, DNA discipleship courses. No? Ako din ang district superintendent ng uh, Southern Tagalog District Council of the Assemblies of God dito sa Pilipinas. And uh, we did some partnership sa inyo dyan sa UAE at uh, tinatawag yung inyong network na AGMEN, no? Assemblies of God Minist um, Ministry uh, um, Middle East Network. No? AGMEN, Assemblies of God Middle East um, Network. No? So we've been uh, teaching DNA courses in your uh, in your network uh, since the start of the year 2022 no nakatapos sa na tayo ng dalawang uh, course no uh, DNA course 1 DNA course uh, 2 okay so ngayon again uh, let me repeat our topic is about four chair discipling no ito pong four chair discipling ay dinibelo po ni Dr. Dan Spader. No? And uh, si Dr. Dan Spader, gumamit po siya ng analogy of uh, uh, four chairs upang i-illustrate yung four different challenges Jesus gave his disciples during uh, different levels of maturity in their discipleship journey. No? So tinukoy ni Dr. Dan Spader, napansin niya na meron po kasing apat na discipleship challenges ang ating Panginoon. Tapos ginamit po niya yon at ginamit po niyang illustration yung tinatawag na four chair. No? So, chair one represents the first discipleship challenge ni Lord. And then, chair two, ginagamit niya po ito bilang uh, representation ng uh, second discipleship uh, challenges ng Panginoon and then chair three to represent the third challenges of the Lord Jesus Christ. And lastly, the fourth chair ay uh, patungkol po dun sa fourth challenges ng ating pong Panginoon. Okay? So welcome sa DNA Course 3, four chair discipling. Okay? So four chair discipling. So uh, si Pastor Noel ang mag-open po sa atin sa prayer. Pastor Noel. Sige po. Sige po tayo. Heavenly Father in Jesus' name, salamat Lord sa hapong ito, sa gabing ito, Father God, sa Pilipinas. Salamat, Father God, for this again, sa opportunity na ito, Father God, that you have given to us, Lord, to study this uh, third DNA course, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, even for us as uh, uh, students, as uh, ministers, Father God, Lord, for this opportunity that we can, Lord, today, Father God, learn from you. And also, Father God, we pray, Father God, that, Lord, uh, guide us, uh, uh, lead us, Father God. And we pray, Lord, that, uh, Lord, to Pastor Abner, Father God, to God, for uh, your wisdom, Father God, na ibigay mo sa kanya, Father God. But, Lord God, na, Lord, uh, uh, and we, we, we pray, Father God, for everyone, Lord, that uh, today, Father God, will be, Father God, Lord, uh, a victorious uh, training because, Father God, you are with us and, uh, Father God, you are leading this training, Father God. Salamat, Lord, at to God, uh, uh, lead nyo kami at uh, hanggang sa umpisa at hanggang sa matapos, Father God. Salamat, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you, Pastor Noel. Okay. So... Amen. Um, again, for chair discipling, DNA course number three. So, um, itong training na ito ay tutulungan po tayo to answer the following questions na may kinalaman po sa usapin po ng pag-aalagad. Okay. So, the first question that this training will answer, how did Jesus make disciples who make disciples? Paanong nag-alagad ang Panginoon upang itong mga alagad na ito ay matuto din na sila po ay mag-alagad? Secondly, this training will clarify this question. What are the four stages 
of the spiritual pathway Jesus used and what was the primary challenge of each stage. No? Tutukuyin ng training na ito, ano po yung apat na baitang upang uh, lumakbay sa spirituality, ano ang ginamit ng ating Panginoon at uh, sa bawat stages na yon ano ang task to do or challenges that needs to be done on each stage no thirdly we will clarify that this training will clarify this question what did jesus intend to produce in the lives of his disciples at each at each uh, stage no <clears throat> ano ang uh, intensyon ng panginoon na nais niyang maging bunga doon sa kanyang mga inaalagad sa bawat stages. No? For example, sa first stage, what was the intention of Jesus that He would like to produce in the life of the disciple? Then to the second stage, the third stage, and to the fourth stage respectively. <clears throat> and uh, fourthly, this training will help us answer this question. No? Which chair I'm currently at And how do I graduate to the next level? So, tutukuyin natin, ipapaliwanag natin, malaman natin in the four chair discipleship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Nasa anong chair po tayo? At paano po tayo mag-move up, no? mag-graduate sa bawat uh, 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 chair of the four chairs para tayo po ay makapag-level up. Okay? And then lastly, uh, this training will will clarify and make answer no this question, how do I level up those that I'm discipling? No? So pag natutunan mo itong four-chair discipling in the context of the four challenges of the Lord Jesus Christ as He did discipleship, as He produces disciples, um, paano mo gagamitin itong training na ito upang tulungan mo yung mga inaalagad mo, yung mga tinutulungan mong mag-grow in discipleship, how you would help them grow, how you will help them really level up. Okay? So, this training, again, will help us answer the following questions. No? Okay. Uh, we will, let me play a video Okay, to for, so that we will be further understand. How do you know? How do you know you're going the right direction? How do you know you're sipping the perfect cup of coffee? How do you know you've studied hard enough to pass the test? How do you know you've found true love? How do you know that you've made a disciple? How do you know? Isn't that the question that we should be asking ourselves? That's our mission that Jesus has given us. Matthew chapter 28. Therefore, go and make disciples. But how do we know when we truly accomplish that? Because honestly, when we think about it, if we failed to make disciples, then we failed as the church. So how do we know? There might be a thousand different ways that we could answer that question, but really, shouldn't we go back to the measuring stick, the model, Jesus himself? In Sun Life's four chair discipling training, that's exactly what we do. Looking at Jesus as our model, what he did with his disciples, so that he could produce disciples who make disciples who make disciples. to be a part of transforming the culture of youth ministry in North America, restoring it to the disciple-making heart of Jesus. And that's something that we really believe we will see happen as together we get engaged on this mission that Jesus has given us, to be disciples who make disciples, to build disciple-making ministries, 
and to begin disciple-making movements that launch from here to the ends of the earth. Going back to the model that can help us to assess, to identify if we truly have made disciples. That's how we'll know. Okay, uh, uh, let's proceed, okay. So nakikita po natin sa slide yung Matthew 28, 18 to 20. The question is how to become a disciple who makes disciple. No? Uh, Sabay-sabay po nating basahin, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. All authority, All authority in heaven, authority in heaven, heaven and earth, and earth, and earth has been given, given to me. me. Therefore, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, baptizing them in the name of the, of the Father, Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Spirit teaching and them, teaching them to obey everything, everything I, have I have commanded you. Surely, I will be with you, be with you all the way to the end of the age. Okay, yan. So, itong uh, Matthew 28, 8 and 20 na binasa po natin, very popular po ito, no? At uh, ito ay kinikilala natin as the Great Commission Passage, no? And uh, few understand that this is actually ang pinaka-summary statement of the life of Jesus. So, if you look at Matthew 28, 80 to 20, you will see the very point, the very heart, the very foundation, the very nutshell of the statement of the Lord's life and ministry. No? Ngayon, kung ang kanyang mga disciple ay ma-miss out what Jesus did on earth, okay? uh, what He did to them as a disciple no? for the past, uh, let's say, three and a half years, then this statement of His in Matthew 28, 18-20 makes it very clear. No? Ngayon, kapag uh, in-interpret natin properly ang Matthew 28, 18-20, the summary statement of Jesus' life, known to be the Great Commission, mapapansin po natin, meron lamang pong one main command on this text. Ano po yon? Make disciples. Gumawa o lumikha po tayo ng mga alagad. Now, there are three participles <clears throat> or action words that describe how to make disciples. Ano po yung napansin po natin? Una, going. This is about uh, winning the loss. And then the second participle is baptizing. This tells us about building the believers. Okay. And then the teaching. Teaching to obey. No? Ito naman ay patungkol doon sa equipping the harvest workers. So again, uh, balikan ko, the one command is to make disciple. How you will make disciple according to the Lord by going, winning the loss, then baptizing or building the believers, and then teaching to obey as equipping the harvest workers. And then at the latter part, ng Matthew 28, 18-20, the Lord told us to lo or behold ang sabi niya. And He will always calls us to look to Him continually as our model as we make disciples. No? So as we send out ourselves no? and as we um, pursue discipleship, nakatingin tayo sa ating Panginoon for He is the author and perfecter of our faith. No? And he made a promise when we obey him, no? when we obey him, uh, he will be with us to the very end of the age. No? The very end of the age. Right? Okay. Now,
what is a disciple no what is a disciple uh, can i ask someone to read the definition of disciple pastor dani pwede pong pakibasa po yung slide uh, what this training provide us about definition of disciple pastor dani bautista amen what is a disciple one who knows god personally and pursues jesus passionately Modeling everything in their life after the character and priorities of Christ. Yan. Thank you, Pastor Danny, for reading the slide. No, this is a slide that we have read. Actually, the training or discourse definition of what is a disciple. No, alam natin if we want to make a certain kind of disciple, kailangan meron tayong clear definition of what a disciple is. No. So we have to have explained what a disciple is or, 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 or the picture of a disciple that we would like to be. Then let's produce that picture or definition of the disciple that we have established. Okay. Now, as you look at the definition of a disciple, mapapansin po natin, merong three areas of emphasis. Okay. There are three areas of emphasis as to this definition. Okay? Tingnan po ninyo no, yung una po personal area and then the second area is purposeful and the third area is the principle driven. So the relationship ng master and student, the disciple and the and the disciple, di ba? The master and the disciple Ito yung tatlong area na binibigyang diin with this definition. It should be that the relationship between the master and student should be personal, purposeful, and principle-driven. And also, this definition is providing us um, the very goal of discipleship. Ano ang pinakapakay ng pag-aalagad? Of course, it's very obvious, it's no-brainer that the goal of discipleship is to be like Christ. No? At the end of the day, ang pag-aalagad upang ang inaalagad ay maging kawangis ng Panginoon. No? And uh, as we follow Christ in the discipleship journey as a disciple, di ba? Uh, it involves developing the character of Christ in us and understanding the priority of Christ for us. So sa pagsunod natin sa Panginoon in the discipleship journey, gusto po natin na uh, makita yung character ng Panginoon sa atin bilang mga alagad at tinutupad po natin yung priority ng Panginoon sa ating pong mga buhay. Okay. Now, let me continue. Okay. So, uh, bilang Christian, merong dalawang expectations. As you look at the slide, so the first ex expectation, I am in Christ. And the second um, expectation of being a Christian, I follow Christ. So, ako ay kabilang kay Kristo, the first expectation. At sumusunod ako sa Panginoon, that's the second expectation. Now, remember this, these two expectations of being a Christian, I am in Christ and I follow Christ, hindi po ito mapaghihiwalay, right? You cannot separate or dichotomize these two expectations of being a Christian, I belong to Christ and I follow Christ. Ngayon, in the New Testament, the word Christian and disciple, kung mapapansin natin, are often used interchangeably. No? In fact, in the Gospel and Acts, uh, never mentioned the word Christian. Napansin niyo po ba yun? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, walang binanggit na salitang Christian. In the book of Acts, until Acts 11, sakalang bumanggit ng salitang Christian. Okay? Uh, the Greek word matetes, no? a disciple or a student, it appears 261 times in the Gospel and Acts. In Matthew, it appears 72 times. In Mark, 46 times the word disciple. In Luke, 37 times. In John, 78 times. Acts, 28 times. In other words, both the Gospels and the Acts clearly expects that every Christian 
to be a disciple, no more, no less. Okay? Pinupunto na ang lahat ng Kristiyano, those who belong to Christ and who follow Christ, must be a disciple. Now, uh, to, to, to follow Christ, we must have a clearer picture of the four aspects of the Lord's life so that we could come closer to following His character and priorities. Ngayon, ang tanong, ano yung apat na aspeto ng buhay ni Kristo bilang mga alagad na dapat po nating sundin upang maintindihan natin yung character and kanyang priorities that could reflect in our lives. Okay, tingnan po natin. Ano? Una, uh, as we follow Christ, we must understand His model. We have to understand how you and I can walk as the Lord walk in our everyday life. Okay? Ngayon, sa pagsunod natin sa Panginoon, kailangan maintindihan natin yung kanyang mission. What is His mission? We have to discover the Father's purpose in uh, the Father's purpose is for every aspect of our life. And then, Another another uh, another area that we need to understand in following the Lord, ano yung kanyang motive, his motive, no? Embracing what Jesus did, uh, the will of the Father even when it was difficult. And lastly, we have to understand his method. Uh, following the disciple making pathway Jesus journeyed with his disciples. So Uh, sa pagsunod natin sa Panginoon in our respective discipleship journey we look the Lord we, we, we have to look at the Lord's model what is his mission how he was motivated and what is his method no so mapapansin mo doon sa slide may iba't ibang icon to represent this uh, um, four areas of following the character and priorities of Jesus Diba? Doon sa model, ano po yung icon na ginamit? Ano po yung icon na ginamit sa model? Ano po nakita po keyboard. niyo? Keyboard. Keyboard. Yeah, keyboard. How about doon sa kanyang mission? Ano po ang ginamit? Globe. Globe, right? Doon po sa motive, ano po ang icon na ginamit? Heart. Heart, very good. Doon sa method, ano po ang ginamit na icon? Mug. Cup, coffee cup or mug. Tama, no? So, keyboard. ba? Diba? Keyboard. Ito yung ginagamit natin yung mga command C, command B, or copy, paste. ba? Diba? ba? Diba? Sa keyboard, ginagamit natin yung command C, command B as a victory. Yung po yung copy, paste. Ibig sabihin kasi, on that icon, ba? Diba? we copy, paste, or we follow the model of Christ sa ating pag-aalagad, right? And then, doon sa kanyang mission, ang ginamit na icon ay globe upang paalalahanan tayo that we have a great commission to make disciple. And to make disciple, ang ating area of responsibility is global. All people, all nations. Mapapansin natin, in terms of his motive, ang ginamit po na icon ay heart. Okay? Ibig sabihin, Um, it tells us that the motivation of Christ to obey the Great Commission is the great commandment of loving God and others. Diba? We're very familiar with the, with the Great Commandment, love God, love people. Yun ang ating puso, yun ang puso ng Panginoon sa pagsunod sa Kanyang Ama. In the discharge of His duty, He is motivated of this Great Commandment pagmamahal sa Diyos at pagmamahal sa kapwa. Now, um, it's surprising yung ginamit na icon dun sa kanyang method ay coffee mug or coffee cup. Bakit? Kasi ang, ang methodology, ang kaparaanan ng Panginoon sa kanyang pag-aalagad is relational. Spending time with His disciples whom He invested His life to disciple them. All right. Diba? Kasi coffee cup over a cup of coffee. Alika, kapi tayo, ba? Diba? Ibig sabihin nun, let's have fellowship, let's spend time together. ba? Diba? 
it catches the idea of the coffee cup, coffee mug, mag kape, di ba? That, that to pursue the idea na yung kanyang kaparaan sa pag-aalagad ay very relational. Okay? So, uh, tonight, no, we're going to look at in a detailed manner yung kanyang model, yung kanyang mission, yung kanyang motive, yung kanyang method. Okay? So that our discipleship, our discipleship journey, our producing disciple reflects the character and priorities of the Lord. Okay? So, moving on, tingnan natin yung kanyang, let's, let's understand further these four areas that we're talking about. Model, uh, mission, motive, and method. So the first, the first, the the first area is about model of Christ. Okay, uh, brother Bong, Pastor Bong, pwede mo pakibasa po yung slide. First John chapter two verse six. Okay, po. Whoever claim to live in Him must walk as Jesus did. 1 John chapter 2 verse 6. Again, ano po ang icon na ginamit para maintindihan po natin yung model area ng ng discipleship journey natin sa Panginoon. Ano po 'yon? Keyboard, yung command C, command B or copy paste. No. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, uh, every disciple is expected to be like our master. To be like the Lord Jesus Christ. Ibig sabihin, uh, we have to walk as the Lord walked here on earth. We have to follow Him as our model. How He prayed, how He showed dependence with the Father, okay? how He relate Himself to the sinners, what are His characters, what are His uh, priorities. No? Kung paanong namuhay ang ating Panginoon, yun din ang dapat na pamumuhay natin bilang kanyang mga alagad. We follow his footstep. We follow his uh, example. Okay? Yun ang ibig sabihin. No? Uh, so, but, but consider this, no? Uh, what do you think it means to walk as Jesus walk? Do you believe walking as Jesus walk is even possible? Sige po, pwede po kayo mag-open ng inyong mga microphone and uh, share to share to the group, no? Share to this to, to our training, to this course, your thoughts about this uh, consideration. Sige po. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng lumakad katulad ng paglakad ng Panginoon? At posible ba talaga nating uh, malakaran kung paanong lumakad ang Panginoon nung siya po ay nabubuhay dito sa lupa? Would it be possible? And what does it mean to walk like Jesus? Sige po, sige po. Sige po, uh, pop up na lang kung sino yung gustong mag-share. Anong ibig sabihin ng uh, lumakad katulad ng paglakad ng Panginoon? At posible ba kung paanong lumakad ang Panginoon dito sa lupa ay maparisan po natin? Brian, Brian, oh, dyan si Brian, uh, JT, uh, sige, sige, sige. Uh, Pastor? Ako po. Ako na po. Okay, ya, uh, yung comment ko lang po doon, at anong posible ba? Uh, yung question po na yun, medyo, ano, medyo tricky question. In terms po of uh, paano siya namuhay dito, Paano siya nag-humble? Yung, at, yung attributes po. Uh, dapat po tayong mag-follow doon. But in terms po doon sa kanyang sakripisyo at uh, yung kanyang pagbigay ng buhay doon sa para sa yung pagiging Diyos niya po medyo uh, yun po ay Uh, alam po at naniwala ko na siya lang po ang pwedeng magbigay 
nung uh, salvation na ating nararanasan ngayon. So, clear naman po yung sinabi sa salita ng Panginoon na all those who wants to follow Him must um, uh, deny Him sa and take up this cross and uh, follow Him uh, ng kanyang buhay. Yun lang po. Salamat po. Okay. Uh, <laughs> any other question? Siguro nag interplay sa isip natin, how can we walk like the Lord Jesus Christ? Eh, when Jesus is fully God, became man, paano yun? Paano nating malalakaran kung paano din siyang lumakad? Maaabot ba natin yun? Is it doable or, or feasible or possible to walk like Jesus? <laughs> Sige po, uh, yung mga sister natin dito, sister Ami, sister Ena, what do you think? Uh, well po sa, medyo mahirap po talaga ang sagot na to, pas. Uh, hirap po talaga po ito, but uh, we believe that uh, apart from him, hindi talaga natin kaya to eh. So if we are not believers and if we we are not in Christ, uh, we cannot uh, maintain uh, to walk along with Him. But uh, dito sa question na to, uh, is it possible na maging uh, kaparehas natin yung mapapan, ma, ma, malalakaran ba natin yung nilakaran ni Jesus Christ? Yung, kung imaginein lang natin yung full sacrifice niya during His time, kung paano niya hinarap yung mga mocks, insults ng mga uh, pariseyo ng unang panahon, especially if we are uh, going to review what happened to the book of Matthew at saka yung talino niya, yung wisdom niya, parang ano eh, sa panahon natin, parang uh, mahirap po sagutin. But uh, to become obedient, gaya ng uh, pag, pag uh, sunod niya sa will ng kanyang ama, uh, that is the most remarkable kung paano niya inaccept yung will will of the father para sa kanyang mission. Uh, sa tingin ko sa atin sa panahon ngayon mahirap po talaga without prayer. Okay, okay, okay. So it 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 will be difficult uh, na lumakad katulad ng paglakad ng ating Panginoon. But the question is, ina nga ano, posible ba? Sabi niyo nga mahirap. Imposible yata. <laughs> Any other thoughts, no? Pastor, uh, ako po. Uh, yes, Pastor Noel. I uh, question, yung question din, uh, what do you think it means to walk as Jesus walk? Uh, siguro pang itindi ko dyan is uh, uh, kung walk as Jesus walk means uh, what did Jesus do uh, uh, in, the, in his ministry? Right? So, uh, so, do you is a question naman doon isa, do you think walking as Jesus walk is even possible? I would say yes. Siguro I would say yes. In terms of what he did, like, uh, yun, uh, kung ano mga uh, uh, purpose niya, ano ang, ang, ang model, ang mission niya, so, ang motive or ang method niya. In terms of that, yes, I think it's... Uh, possible that we can follow it we can do as Jesus do as Jesus did but of course uh, he is God and we are man so of course um, we cannot do all what he did but in terms of this ministry uh, yes I think it's doable <laughs> Tama po kayo, Pastor Noel. so doable feasible <clears throat> yeah um, kasi nga po, no, uh, y- y- yun na nga, ano, uh, we are, we are, ano, we are uh, uh, challenged with this understanding. Teka muna, Diyos siya na nagkatawang tao. Paano ko, paano ko mapapantayan yung paglakad niya dito sa lupa in terms of power, obedience, spirituality, <coughs> exalting the Father, something like that, no? Uh, I, I I believe no doon sa paliwanag po nung ni Dan Spader ni Dr. Dan Spader na when he came here on earth 
he lived like a man, no, tao po, no, na very dependent with uh, uh, merong, merong mga uh, foundational priorities that Jesus follows while he was here on earth, di ba? He is fully human being. Di ba? He is fully human being. And he did some foundational priorities or, or discipline upang ika nga eh, magawa niya yung kalooban ng Ama. Magawa niya ang pinagagawa ng Diyos Ama. No? Uh, kasi he is our model. Ang tanong, can we live like what Uh, can we live like Jesus? For me, ang sagot ko po dyan, it's possible to be, to possible. live like Jesus. No? Uh, pwede na, we, we can be like Jesus. We can live like Jesus. No? Uh, in terms of mission, in terms of ministry, we can live like Jesus. Kasi, what's the point, no, nasabi niya na uh, you will be like your master. Kung hindi naman pala natin maaabot yung kanyang standard, di ba? Yes. In terms of in terms of obedience to the Father, in terms of loving the sinners, di ba? In terms of uh, producing disciples, in terms of uh, fulfilling the will and the work of the Father, I believe it's possible to walk like Jesus. He is our model that we could we could look like Him in terms of living out. Okay? Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. So, uh, so, to do that, like Jesus, we must depend upon the following. Like what I'm say, what, what, like what I have said a while ago, no? we have to understand yung kanya mga foundational priorities and spiritual discipline that he did. So, is able to fulfill the will and the work of the Father. Now, He's our model. Can we also do that to fulfill the will and the work of the Father? So like Jesus, if you study His life in the Gospel, uh, ito yun eh, no? Um, to live like Jesus, we must depend upon three things, no? These are the foundational priorities or spiritual discipline that we need to do like Jesus. Upang, we will be able to uh, fulfill the will and the work of the Father. You have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Luke 4, 1, 14, 18, it exemplifies in the life of Jesus. His full dependence upon the Spirit. Kaya niya nagawa ang kalooban at pinagagawa ng Ama. In the same manner, to walk like that, kailangan din natin ng pagtitiwala sa banal na spirito. So if you want to mature, to produce disciple, to be obedient to the Father, to fulfill the will and the work of the Father in our life, in our ministry, like the Lord, we can live like that by dependence upon the Spirit. And Jesus is fully dependent with the Word of God if you read Matthew 5:17 to 19. So He was able to produce disciple. He was able to glorify God because he's fully centered on the Word of God. Ngayon, uh, on that model, paano tayo makalakad katulad ni Cristo that is able to glorify God, exalt the Father, did the will and the work of the Father? Eh, simple lang, no? Like the Lord, magi tayong Word-centered. No? We have to follow the Scripture. Like the Lord, so so we could live like the Lord. Eh, ang secret lang, He obeyed the Word. So if we obey the Word, we could live like Him. Tama? And prayer, in Mark 1.35, no? Napaka-champion ni Jesus pagdating sa prayer. So very very early in the morning, Mark 1.35 narrates, uh, while it's still dark, no? madaling araw pa lang, He find a solitary place So he could pray and uh, seek the will of the Father. Isa sa mga secret foundational prayer <coughs> no, na ginawa ng ating Panginoon, yung panalangin. That, that's why he was able to fulfill the will and the work of the Father while living on earth. Ngayon, how can we live like that? The key is, like Jesus, we have to pray. So, the secret of Jesus. Okay. 
he was able to live according to the will and the work of the Father. His Holy Spirit dependence, God's Word-centered, and prayerful dependence. Ngayon, para makalakad tayo <clears throat> sa buhay natin at sa paglilingkod natin to produce disciple, to do the will of God, to work the work of the Father like Jesus, depend on the Spirit, depend on the Word of God, depend on prayer. Okay? Yan. So, moving forward, punta na tayo dito sa second area of the Lord that we need to follow. We have to understand His mission. Okay? His mission here on earth, of course, to die on the cross for our salvation, but also to make disciple. Okay? Remember, ang icon ng, ng mission ni Jesus na ginamit in this presentation ay globe. Ibig sabihin, our work to do is to disciple the whole world. Okay. Now, I want you to consider this. No? Why did Jesus come to earth? And what was his mission? Think about it. Bakit na parito si Cristo sa, sa lupa? Ano ang kanyang primary mission? Okay. To glorify the Father God. To glorify the Father God. Okay? Yes, the Father. To glorify the Father God. And okay. Bring the salvation to the nation, to the people. Ama. So, uh, naparito ang Panginoon at ang kanyang mission dito sa lupa, sabi nga ninyo, luwalatiin ang Ama at maging kaligtasan siya ng sangkatawan. Tama po yun. That's the common answer. He came here on earth to die for the sins of mankind. Without a doubt. No, we do not argue. No, it's That's the point why he incarnated and became man. However, uh, we have to, we, we have to um, explain what he said in John 17 verse 4. Sabi niya, I glorified you on earth having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. Hmm. Diba? Sabi niya sa John, John 17 verse 4. Okay? Now, if you see the timeline nung binanggit ng Panginoon yung John 17 verse 4, when he prayed this, it was before, before his passion, before his crucifixion, before his death on the cross. Now, what was this work? He completed as he described in John 17 verse 4, eh, before crucifixion ito eh. Okay? If you study the context, the work that he has done, that he did prior to his death at the cross, ano yun? Produce disciples. So the work in John 17 verse 4 is about Disciple making. Disciple making. Tama ba? Tama? So, you have to understand the timeline. John 17 verse 4, sabi ni Jesus, I finished the work. I have accomplished the work you gave me to do. Yes. Okay, now, is it is it death on, on the, uh, at the cross for our salvation? No. No. It's about producing disciples. Continually with the making of disciples. Uh, disciple making. Yes. Yes, primarily the the uh the will and the work that he need to accomplish from God is death on the cross for our salvation. Pero dito sa John 17 verse 4, he also came here on earth to produce disciples, to make disciples. Okay? Clear? Clear tayo doon, no? Di ba? Okay. So... Uh, okay. Looking at the slide, you know, uh, it is incomplete na sabihin natin that Jesus came only to die for our sins. If we see the fuller picture, it goes like this. No? Uh, in John 4.34, ang sabi niya, my food, Jesus is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work 
John chapter 4, verse 34. Okay? Now, God's will is, sabi dyan, to seek and to save the lost. Yes. And God's work is to make, to make and multiply disciples. disciples. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, uh, parang dalawang pakpak ng eroplano. Hindi ba? Dalawang pakpak ng eroplano. Okay? So, uh, you cannot have one without the other, di ba? Yung uh, dalawang wings ng airplane, di ba? An airplane must have two wings or two sides or it's like two sides of a coin. Parang ganyan. You cannot have one without the other. So the only way that all those people can hear the message of salvation, experience life transforming transformation is through a disciple making movement. Jesus did this and he and he accomplished both. Di ba? So remember this, di ba? Uh, he has to make disciples sapagkat sino ang magpapangalat ng kanyang great sacrifice at the cross for our salvation if he will not produce disciples. Jesus knew, all right, he will offer himself at the cross, he will die on the cross for our salvation. Now, at alam din niya, babalik sa langit, sino ang magpapangalat ng kanyang great sacrifice at the cross for our salvation? He has to make disciples while he is on earth. Tama? Alright? It goes together. It goes together. Who will tell the people that he died on the cross for their salvation if in the first place he will not produce disciples? Who will? So who will do the movement? Who will do the proclamation? Di ba? Who will do the spreading of the news? He has to make disciples. He accomplished both. He produced disciples. Then he died on the cross for our salvation. He asked the disciples to share the gospel of salvation, to make also people to be a disciple of Jesus. Okay. Clear? Okay. Now, uh, let's go through these passages. No, so the mission of Jesus included. Okay, my food. Again, ano rin? Basahin ko my food. Said Jesus is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. Naka underline what is the will of the Father and what is the work that Jesus must must do. Di ba? Okay, Luke nineteen ten, John three sixteen, John ten ten. This was the will of the Father to seek and to save the lost was the will of the Father. Diba? Maliwanag yun eh. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whosoever believes in nation that perish but have life everlasting. The will of the Father that all people will be saved. So we'll be saved. On the other hand, nabasa natin, John 17 verse 4. I have brought to glory. Okay. Colossians 1 6. Ito naman ang work of the Father to make and multiply Disciples. To make and multiply disciples. Okay? okay. So the will of the Father, our salvation, the work of the Father to make disciples. Okay. Now, the third area, the third area na tayo, no? The third area is motive. No? His motive, his method, kanina, his mission, 
now his motive no uh, sister ami or sister ena uh, can you read itong uh, itong nasa slide Amen. Uh, Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Thank you for reading. No? Uh, yung same reason na tumulong sa Panginoon to endure the cross and to finish his mission on earth. Yun din ang ating reason kung bakit tayo mag-aalagad sa araw na ito. Ngayon. At ito ang sinasabi ng Matthew 22, 37 to 38. Okay? Why is the Great Commandment the ultimate motive for the Great Commission? What happens if they are treated separately? No? So, ibig sabihin, sinasabi lang natin dito, the Lord Jesus, able to endure the cross, finish the mission of, of, of what the Father uh, told him to do dahil sa kanyang pag-ibig sa Diyos at sa tao. Ngayon, it's also our motivation to make disciple because we love God and we love other people. No? Ngayon, uh, ibig sabihin, of all the possible motives that we could have in ministry, in leadership, in mission, and in discipleship, Love is the greatest one. Tama? There is no other motivation for us to make disciple than love. Okay? So, we're able to fulfill the great commission of making disciple by living out the great commandment, love. Okay? Magagawa nating tapusin ang utos na mag-alagad kung tayo ay tinutulak ng pag-ibig. No? So, what motivated Jesus? Hebrews 12.2 Who for the joy set before Him, He endured the cross. No? Uh, ano ang nagbigay sa Kanya ng endurance to endure the passion of the cross? Love God, love people. Sabi niya sa John 13, 34 to 35, di ba? A new command, I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Okay? And uh, in, 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 in relationship, what motivates us? First John 3, 1. How great? is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. Okay? So 1 John 4, 6, as, and so we know and rely on the love of God has for us. God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God and God in Him. No? So like Jesus, ano kanyang motive to endure the cross, to finish His mission here on earth? Pag-ibig. In the same manner, we will do discipleship in our ministry because we are motivated by the same motivation of Jesus, which is love. Alright? So, 10 minutes break po muna tayo. Let's have a CR break or coffee break or quick snack for 10 minutes. Tapos balik po tayo after 10 minutes. Okay?
All right. Okay. Are you there? Uh, Nadya na po ba ulit kayo? Bo, Pastor Bong, Danny. Amen po. Amen. Nadya Amen. Na po Nakabalik na po. Brian. Amen po. Amen po. Juanito, Liberty, Dominic. Amen po. Amen po, Pastor. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, quickly lang. Uh, let's have a breakout. No? Uh, Paki-screenshot uh, para may copy kayo. Okay. So, gawa tayo ng breakout uh, rooms. Pasok po kayo doon. Ito po yung dalawang uh, pag-usapan po nyo. What are the three areas of emphasis on the definition of a disciple given in this course that we need to understand? Pangalawa, what are the four aspects of Jesus' life that we need to follow in discipleship? Okay? Na-screenshot na po ba? May copy na kayo ng question sa breakout? Okay na? Hello? Yes po. Okay na. Okay na. Okay. So stop share na muna ako. Nakuha nyo na. Napicturean nyo na. Okay. So mag-create ako ng uh, breakout rooms. Okay, let me create breakout rooms. Siguro mag-create po ako ng dalawa na lang. No? Five participants sa uh, each, okay? So, open ko na po at uh, pasok po tayo. All right, okay. A uh, quick sharing time lang. Okay, nakabalik na po. Ayan, okay. All right. Uh, siguro sharing lang tayo, quickly lang. Ano po yung three areas of... Uh, emphasis about the definition of discipleship that uh, this course uh, has presented. Ano po yun? Three letter P. Prayer. Personal. 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 Principal driven. Principal driven. Okay, tama. So, yun yung three areas uh, nung definition na binigay sa atin ng course. No? Personal. Purposeful. Uh, Principal. Principal. Okay. Good. Ngayon, ano po yung apat na areas that we need to emulate from the Lord uh, as we follow the Lord? Uh, apat na M. Model. Follow his model. Model. His model, mission. Uh, his mission, mission. His method. Motive. Motive and method. And method. Very good. Very good. Okay. Very good, children. Very good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Balik po ako sa aking pong screen sharing. Uh, let's continue. Okay. So, let's look at the method. Now, the fourth area, uh, yung uh, method ng ating Panginoon. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you a uh, fisher of men. Now, uh, we would like to look how Jesus made disciples. Ano yung kanyang methodology, kaparaanan? No. Um, kung paano po siyang nag-produce ang disciple, no? Ano ang kanyang mga plano? Ano ang kanyang mga strategy? How did it work? Okay? So, 
on this uh, on, on 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 this slide okay so jesus invited his disciples disciples to journey with him toward accomplishing the father's mission okay so nag-anyaya siya ng kanyang mga alagad na samahan siya sa paglalakbay at together matapos sila yung mission ng panginoon dito po sa lupa now in the study the method of jesus um ay may tatlong bagay, relational, missional, and intentional. So the method of Jesus to produce disciple that we need to emulate is uh, relational, missional, and intentional. No? So uh, let's look at this. No? The method of Jesus is relational. No? Relational. Okay? Uh, the Lord spent time with his disciples and later he called him friends. No? Very relational ang Panginoon sa kanyang style of discipleship. Okay. In Mark 3, 13-14, for example, the Lord went up on the mountainside and uh, called to him those he, he wanted and they came to him and then he appointed the twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. Okay, so tina, uh, on the mountainside, sabi niya, hindi kayo, be with me, so that I could send you out. To give us the impression that the method of Jesus to produce disciples is very relational. Okay. And also in John chapter 15, uh, verse uh, 15, no? I no longer call you servants, no? Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I have learned from my father I have made known to you. Okay? So the Lord is so relational according to these verses in terms of disciple making. Okay? Um, so um, consider this. Now, what are those things that Jesus did and said that demonstrate the priority he placed on relationships? No? Marami po tayo makikita, mababasa. No? Uh, if you read uh, Matthew chapter 5 until 7 on the Sermon of the Mount, pwede natin ma-identify yung parts of his teaching that focuses on relationship. Okay? On the next slide, okay? Uh, Jesus very relational, no? According to, uh, if, if you read through John chapter 17, the prayer of the Lord before going to the cross, and uh, you could identify those part of his prayer na ang focus po ay relationship. Huh? And then, ang method ni Jesus is not just relational, also the method of Jesus is missional. No, missional. Okay? So Jesus is Jesus, sent his disciples out. So, so Jesus sent his disciples out to do the Father's uh, work, no? Uh, sabi ng Panginoon, as, as you have sent me into the world, I have sent them out into the world. John 17, 18, no? I have a mission. You brought me here on earth. At itong mga naalagad niya, sabi niya, sinusugo din niya. So he was very missional in his method, No? Uh, John 20, 21 to 22, again, Jesus said, Peace be with you as the Father sent me, I am sending you. Very missional. And with that, he read on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, very missional si Jesus. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Okay, so it's very crystal clear na very missional ang style ni Jesus sa discipleship. Okay? Uh, okay, pareho lang ito, no? And then, and finally, the Lord is intentional, no? Very intentional sa kanyang methodology. Okay? Now, ito na, no? Uh, stay with me, no? Uh, your, your, your attention. So, 
the method of this very intentional. Kaya nga ang Panginoon nag, nagbigay ng four challenges bilang four chair discipling process. Intentional ang Panginoon, no? Merong four sequential stages to produce how he produce disciple. Hindi siya random, hindi siya hit and miss, hindi siya unsystematic. No? He was very intentional. He has a process. He has a strategy. Now, ito yon, Okay? First, first challenge niya as, as initial chair, come and see. Yung come and see, he wants his disciple to know him and believe who he is as the Messiah, the Son of God. And then after the come and see stage, he was very intentional. Susunod yung follow me so that they will grow into Christ's character and priorities. And then the third challenge as third chair, sabi niya na, I will make you fisher of men. Ito na, he would like, in, on this stage, he would like to develop the heart and the skills for disciple making. And finally, go and bear fruit. No? Um, so that they will continue to finish the Great Commission in their life. Okay? So makita natin, very intentional si Lord, no? Meron siyang four discipleship challenges. The first one, the initial, the first level, come and see, to become a believer, follow me after that, to become a follower, fish for people, to become a worker, and then fourthly, all right, uh, go bear fruit, to become a disciple maker. Okay? So, uh, if, you look at this, if you look at the slide, okay? So, yung journey ng isang disciple from unbelief towards maturity, merong intentional, sequential paces. Come and see. Invitation, John 1.39, to become a believer. And then, makaka-experience ng repentance and the faith. And then, second chair or the second invitation or challenges. Now that the that, that, that disciple is a believer, ang second invitation ni Jesus, follow me in John 1.43. Now that, that a disciple is a believer and a follower, ang invitation na ni Jesus, very intentional and sequential, the third chair, fish for people to become a worker. And finally, towards maturity, go and bear fruit, John 15 to 16, to be a disciple maker. Okay? <clears throat> Alright? Okay. Hindi na ako magbibigay ng breakout. Pag-usapan na lang natin ito. No? Uh, what are the four discipleship challenges of Jesus? Can you, can you name? What are the four sequential, intentional Discipleship challenges of Jesus. Ano po yung una? Ano yung una? Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. Okay. Follow me. Uh, so, come and follow see. me. Follow me. And then? Uh, for people. For men. Come and see. All. And then ano po yung pangkapat? Uh, oh, 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 very much. Oh, oh very and much. much. Okay. Doon sa come and see, Ano ang task of discipleship doon? Ano ang intention sa come and see? A disciple to become to become, to become a believer. 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 Yeah. believer. So follow me, ano po ang discipleship intention? Ano pong objective? Follow, follow me. To become a follower, to grow, to become character and to grow and uh, yeah. priorities. Yeah. Pagdating sa third, third invitation, fish for people, ano ang task of discipleship? To become disciple, uh, discipler, maker. worker, no, to become worker. worker, to become a worker, worker. worker. <laughs> to become a worker. Tapos yung pang apat, worker, disciple, uh, disciple, discipling, to become a disciple maker. Discipler. Okay, so makita mo no, yan ang four chair discipling. Tamin si to become a believer, and then follow me to become a follower, and then fish for people to become a worker, then go barefoot to become a disciple maker. Right? Okay. So let me end up our first session with this song to the ends of the earth and let us be inspired with this song. Paingan natin.
Amen. Praise God. No. Ah, uh, napakagandang awitin, ano? Uh, Amen. we're challenged na we believe in the Lord and we will go to the ends of the of the earth to tell the story of his uh, salvation. Okay? Praise God. 